It's not a game about flying jets. It's a game about intelligent application of real world tactics and skills in a harsh combat environment. It demands skill and discipline and a firm understanding of some combat axioms that have been learned the hard way over a lot of years. They're designed to teach you how to maneuver your jet in a visual environment. So grab your manual and your joystick and pay attention to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. One of the things that's important to a fighter pilot is style. You know, you like to do things with style. There's no doubt you can fly around, get some shots, you know, kill some people. But really, we're trying to do it with style. What style implies to a fighter pilot is discipline, execution of the basics. What you're going to find out there when you fight that this stuff has got to be instinctive. You're not going to do your best creative uh, thought when you're under pressure in the fight, whether it's with when you're doing it with JP4 or whether you're doing it in the simulation. Before we start into our subject matter, we'd like to talk about the objective of this whole academic presentation. And those objectives are contained in what we call DLOs, or desired learning objectives. Okay, the desired learning objectives for this presentation are one, to be familiar with or get familiar with the terms, okay? Terms and definitions of, of one versus one air combat. The second desired learning objective is to be able to kill and survive in a one versus one scenario. Fighter pilot has one objective out there, that is to kill the enemy, destroy the enemy, and survive. To get to the first learning objective, we have a lot of terms and definitions that, that, it, that are, you need to understand in order to uh, cover one versus one maneuvering. And most of them have to do with geometry or angular relationships between aircraft. There's basically three different types of geometry. Okay, so we're going to talk about all three of these. The first is positional geometry, which very specifically is the angular relationship between two aircraft out there uh, in the environment. Heading crossing angle or angle off, range, and aspect angle. Okay, the first of these is angle off, which we also use the term heading crossing angle to describe. As you see from this picture, we've got two jets with velocity vectors in space. The F-16 is heading in this way, and we've got the fulcrum going this way. The difference, the angular difference between their headings, measured in degrees, is what we call angle off. Okay, the second term is range. It's fairly simple also. It's just the distance between two targets. So for range, it's just, again, the straight line measurement distance between two aircraft here. The next term for positional geometry is aspect angle. To define it simply, aspect angle is a measure from the target's tail to your aircraft. So in this particular picture, the first scene, okay, from the target's tail to your jet, that's zero aspect. If you're out in front on the nose of the bandit, that would be 180 degrees of aspect. Out here, this is 45 degrees right aspect. Aspect is independent of heading, and that's what gets confusing to guys. It has nothing to do with aircraft heading. So this he guy could be heading in any direction. At that particular instant in time, he would be at 45 degrees right aspect. The reason aspect is useful, because if you know range and you know aspect, then you also know your displacement from the target, okay? which is going to be important, as we're going to talk about soon. The next type of geometry we're going to talk about is the attack geometry. Attack geometry is a pursuit course that you take when you start behind the bandit and start an attack. Okay, you have three different options you can take as you attack a target. You can go lag pursuit or put your nose behind the bandit. You can go pure pursuit, put your nose on the bandit. Or you can go lead pursuit, put your nose out in front of the bandit. Here's a falcon scene of a lag pursuit course. As you can see, the flight path marker, or the velocity vector of the aircraft through the sky, is behind this turning bandit. So this is a lag pursuit course. The next pursuit option is pure pursuit. And that's when you point directly at the target. Okay, if you put your uh, flight path marker on the target or near him, okay, that's pure pursuit. And here's a Falcon scene of pure pursuit. You have the target, okay, you have your flight path marker, and they're kind of co-located right there together. So here the fighter is flying a pure pursuit course. Now, if you took that same flight path marker and drug it out in front of the target, okay, that would be lead pursuit, okay, a lead pursuit course.
a lot of discussions. I always like to start my offensive discussions by dispelling a couple myths. Everybody wants to think in terms of, okay, the bandit does a move, okay, and I need a, I need a move. Okay, well, let me look through my cards. Okay, the bandit does a, a right-hand turn, okay, 10 degrees nose low. Then I do a rat's ass shimshay. Okay, yeah, that, 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 that's the counter. You know, uh, but, but you really can't think in terms of a, che you know, a chess kind of thing, you know, where a move, okay, then there's this perfect counter move that it, this doesn't work that way. It's a, it's a fluid thing where the bandit does something and now we got to always be maneuvering our nose and, and you know you know from out, from out there flying that that's just the way it works. There is no set situation that always is the same. Okay, given you start behind the guy in an offensive position, the first objective is to maintain 3-9 line. You know, that, that's pretty, pretty intuitive. Okay, we start behind him, let's stay behind him. Well, what is 3-9 line? And we should define some terms. As you guys know fighter pots talk in clock positions. Yeah, got 12, we got 6, you know, check 6, those kind of terms. We also got 3 and 9. If you draw a line between the 3-9 line, we talk in terms of 3-9 line all the time. Is the guy in front of your 3-9 line? Is the guy behind your 3-9 line? Okay, so the DLO here is given that you start behind him, stay behind him. You know, it's a reasonable objective, you know. Okay, now once you stay behind him, shoot him. You're in a bad spot if you're not shooting somebody. The other thing we have to note is that, uh, you know, BFM costs energy. When you move your nose in a fighter, it costs you energy. The two are related. The object of BFM is exchanging energy, which is aircraft altitude and airspeed, okay, for nose position. That's what we're trying to do. We've got the jet flying along with a certain, uh, you know, mock on it, certain amount of knots, smash on the jet. We've got certain amount of altitude. Now we're going to exchange that. We're going to spend it to move the nose. Okay, it's going to cost you. Now, when you go straight, you can, you can, uh, you know, you can gain it back. But th there's a relationship between the two. The other thing you have to note about BFM is it's not flown in the present. BFM is flown in the future. You don't fly to where the aircraft is. You've got to fly to where he's going. And there's some steps to flying BFM in the future. Those steps are pretty much observe the bandit, see what he's doing, you know, yeah. Predict where he's going maneuver or fly the jet based on this prediction, and then when something changes, as, as it will, you know, react to that change. So those are the steps, you know. Observe, predict, maneuver, react. And they're subliminal. This is a fulcrum, and he sees you in turns. He will create BFM problems. Instantly by me turning, you see heading crossing angle build, you see aspect changing, you see range changing. Those are the BFM problems that are created by a turn. Bandit turns, we got to solve our problem. The way we solve a problem is we turn. And it turns, we turn. Okay, so so we're going to teach you, you know, kind of how, you know, not only you know how to turn, but when to turn. But first, let's talk about turns themselves, because turns are important. Turns have two things associated with them. They have rate, that's how fast you move the nose. They have radius, or how tight the turn is. Those two things. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at Falcon to show you the effects of one aircraft pulling about six to seven Gs at 450 knots. That's right at corner, right. Okay, he started the turn right here. He ended it right there. And you could take a look at, at, again, his rate and radius as he makes the turn. The next guy I'll show up here turning, he's at 550 knots. He's 100 knots above corner, and you can take a look at where his, uh, his rate and radius is carrying him. Much farther out. Those are turns looking from up from above. Now let's take a, uh, a look at a vertical turn. Vertical turns are different in many ways, primarily because we've got gravity. Okay, so what gravity tends to do is flatten out the turn on the back side, and up at the top side, you'll notice you can get a much tighter radius and a much better rate. And this is what fighter pilots call the energy egg. It looks like an egg. Okay, because you get a much better turn up, up here at the top and you have a much worse turn here at the bottom. And that becomes important when we start to talk about head-on BFM and those kind of things. The nose-high fighter has a big advantage. Why? Because he's got Dodge G at the top. You know, he's got like the big hand pullish, pushing him down. Down at the bottom, you have the, you know, the negative effects of, of G at the bottom side. So you've got to play that. When you're, when you're fighting BFM. Okay, let's take a look at two targets, an offensive BFM setup where the bandit starts out at two nautical miles or outside your turn circle. 
you're going to see the fulcrum go into a hard left-hand turn and essentially meet the F-16 in the front. There's really not much this guy can do. Even if he went straight, it wouldn't matter. This guy could pull around and meet him in the front quarter. Because why? This pass started at two nautical miles. Well, let's take a look at another Falcon view. Same, this is the exact same setup, but now you can see it from a, from a different view to help reinforce it. You jump this guy, you, start, you see this turn, you're watching him, watching him, watching him, and you start seeing the front part of his airplane. What happened? He started outside his turn circle. Okay, and there you have a front quarter pass from this. Okay, so it's important to ask yourself the question. When I start a fight, I kind of start jumping this guy, and, and I ask myself this question, self, am I inside or outside his turn circle? Is his present turn rate going to cause a front quarter pass? If his present turn rate is going to cause a front quarter pass, I'm outside his turn circle. So, so what should I do different if I start outside his turn circle? Don't go for turning room. Okay? Don't go for turning room. Why? Because you're not, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. If you go up, you might give him turning room. So if you, you, if you start seeing the front, start thinking weapons. Start thinking shooting him and killing him in the front with a weapon because there's nothing else you really can do. Now let's show a pass inside the turn circle, and you'll, got, you'll see a, from Falcon kind of how much different this one is. This is about a 7,000-foot setup. Again, fulcrum against F-16. Fulcrum's going to go into the same left-hand turn at the same G, and the Falcon's going to pretty much react to pretty much the same way he did before. However, the geometry is different from the start. Here's another view of the same thing, exact same turn. Quite a bit different. You don't see that front part of the airplane in, during this turn. You just see the F-16 maintaining 3-9 line position, pulling, pulling, and then finally closing in for a gunshot or a missile shot or whatever, whatever he's in parameters to take there. How do you get to that spot? That's the key of offensive BFM. Fulcrum's out there flying around. Okay, you're starting behind him. You start to see him turn. If he doesn't turn, no BFM problems. You just drive behind and kill him. Okay, but he starts to turn. He's giving you BFM problems. You've got to solve those problems with the turn. You ask yourself, self, am I inside or outside this guy's turn circle? If I'm outside, then I better start thinking weapons, 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 and then a head-on fight. If I don't see, start seeing the front of his airplane, then what do I got to start thinking? I got to drive to, I got to BFM. I got to do offensive BFM. I got to drive to where the fight started. Okay, I'm going to drive to where the fight started, and then I'm going to start my turn when I see the line of sight rate start to increase. Okay, the fulcrum's going to turn, turn, and at some point he's going to start to turn rapid. When that line of sight rate increases, that's when you want to start to turn it. So I've got a, so I've got a, a crutch at 30 degrees when, off the HUD. That's when you want to start your turn. And if you turn right there, you make your turn, you drive your flight path marker to a lag pursuit, two ship widths back, and you just hold that lag pursuit course, hold that lag pursuit course, hold that lag pursuit course until you get to 3,000 feet. Remember, BFM is an exchange of energy for position. So you're spending knots for nose position all the way around this corner. When you get to 3,000 feet now, the fulcrum's slower and you're slower, and now at 3,000 feet, that's the turn diameter. That's when you want to now pull the nose onto the target and take your gunshot. One note of caution as you pull your nose on him. When you get your fuselages aligned, what controls overtake when your fuselages are aligned? Your left hand, the throttle. So now we're right in for a gunshot now on the guy. We were at 3,000 feet. We pulled our nose on him, and we'll just, we'll just show that here in Falcon. The guy has flown effective BFM. He got into 3,000 feet. His nose was in lag, as you saw, and now he's pulling his nose up to the target once he gets to 3,000 feet, taking the gunshot and, and getting the kill. First move the gun cross, because that's the true departure line of the bullets. Next, play the funnel to make the, to make the shot. Remember. Offensive BFM is not a set-piece move counter-move event, but rather a series of fluid maneuvers flown in the future, not to where the bandit is, but to where he will be.
to talk about defense. Okay, in defense, the bandit has an initial position of advantage on you. And of course, we've got some desired learning objectives for defensive BFM. The desired learning objectives are given an initial position of advantage by the bandit. The first objective is to defeat all missile and gun attacks. If there's a missile in the air, then we quit fighting the bandit. We start fighting the missile or the gun, okay? Because there's no need to worry about the bandit if you're, you know, cockpit fills with hair, teeth, and eyeballs, you know, and they're not in the proper lineup, you know. So, uh, so we've got to fight anything in the air first, okay? Next, we've got to create BFM problems for the bandit. You know, he just did some turns and created some BFM problems for us, so now we're going to try to create some BFM problems for him. Okay, then when the bandit BFMs, we're going to take away his turning room, if we can, or, you know, kill him. Or if we can't do that, we're going to try to get out of the fight, separate, okay, extend, get energy, or, if we, or, if we, or get all the, out of way, all the way out of the fight and, and separate. Okay, so those are the DLOs for, for defensive BFM. Okay, we talked about a bandit, right, that started two miles out in front of you, you know, and he made, made this defensive turn, you know, so we can do the same thing to him. We detect a guy farther enough back, we need to turn hard to meet him in the front. When you detect somebody's behind you, you just take your lift vector, okay, roll the jet, Put your lift vector right on the target. Okay, the lift vector comes straight out the top of the airplane. Okay, and you take that lift vector, you put it right on the target, and you pull. Hopefully, you will get a front quarter pass out of it if the fight started with a bandit outside your turn circle. Let's take a look at that in Falcon. Here's the F-16-01 out front, fulcrum behind. Okay, and again, you've got this long-range setup, this two-mile setup, and you can see the effect of the turn. Just a good, hard F-16 turn at corner velocity. Bang, a head-on BFM pass rather than a guy staying behind you, okay? Let's take a different view of that same maneuver. You're driving around, see the bandit behind you, put your lift vector right on him. Here's about a good 7G lift vector on pull. You notice his lift vector's right on him the whole time, and then you get a high, end, you know, high line of sight rate pass, a high angle pass at end game. What happens when the bandit doesn't start at two miles? So we started with the easy one. Guys at two miles, you pull, bang. And I know, I know what you're thinking, because I, I look out there when we've taught this course for lots of years, and I look out at the guys, and, and I know they're waiting for me to tell them the maneuver. They're thinking, there's a maneuver. And if, and if I learn it, then I'll know what to do, because I've seen, I've seen the movie. I mean, there's a movie out, right? <laughs> And uh, there's a guy playing it. It doesn't mind, you know, getting makeup and having his eyebrows plucked and stuff. And that guy, you know, uh, he, he did this maneuver, and, and guess what? Guy flew out in front of him. There ain't no such maneuver, okay? I'm just here to tell you there ain't no such maneuver. You know, you can't, you, there, I wish I could tell you that there was some move you could do there isn't. So all you can do is put your lift vector on the guy when he starts inside the turn circle. The sooner you start this turn, right, the better, because you'll get more BFM problems for him if you get it going soon. So don't delay doing, you know, something creative. Because usually getting creative doesn't help you. You just look back and go, oh, there's a guy behind me. Pull, 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 right at corner, right at corner. Check your airspeed in my corner. Keep pulling, keep pulling. And then you wait for him to do something wrong. Okay, if he turns too late, he could get stuck in deep lag, right? You can just keep this turn coming and keep his nose stuck to lag. If he turns too early, not, he doesn't drive to the elbow, right? He starts to go to lead pursuit out at 5,000 feet. When a guy does that to me, I go, great. All I got to do now is do what? Defend against the gunshot. Okay. All I got to do is defend against the gunshot. But if he does the perfect move, all you're going to buy is time. Now, you may say that, no, oh, that's, that's not worth a shit, you know, I'm buying time. I mean, but that's what you want to do. Because even if it's real and a guy's back behind you, you do want to buy time because things can go wrong, right? I mean, a rattlesnake could, you know, jump up and, you know, bite him in the throat or something from his cockpit. <laughs> okay, here's a defensive turn at one mile, and we're going to see the effect of a you against your clone fight, you know. I mean, this won't be, uh, this won't have a surprising conclusion. Your clone comes in in a fulcrum. You're in an F-16. You're doing everything right. You're pulling your lift vector right on him. And, you know, it doesn't have a real happy ending, as you can see there. <laughs> you know? Missile defense. Okay, anytime you see a missile in the air, that was our first DLO, right? If a missile is in the air, we're going to defend against it. Okay, we got to do that. You fight missiles with aspect. That's how you fight a missile, with aspect. And what I mean by fight missiles with aspect is you put them on the beam. Okay, you put them at 9 o'clock, you put them at 3 o'clock. That's how you fight a missile. We have a telestrator shot of a missile attack and a correct response of a guy taking the missile and putting it on the beam. Missile's in flight. Falcon's in a right-hand uh, right turn. 
Falcon turns, puts the missile on the beam, and he gets lucky. Okay, the missile doesn't, doesn't hit him. Why do you put missiles on the beam? Okay. You put missiles on the beam because it makes them pull the maximum amount of lead. Okay, what missiles do is they come off the rail and they zero out their line of sight rate. They, they, they pull lead pursuit so that they can get to you faster. Why do they want to get to you faster? Well, it isn't meanness, you know, because they feel they'll kill you no matter what. They want to get to you faster because then they can get there with the rocket motor burning. So when you maneuver, they've got energy, right? All maneuvering in the air costs energy. You spend energy. Missiles spend energy, too. If you can get that rocket motor to burn out and you make a move, the missile is not going to be able to maneuver very well. I mean, one turn, and, you know, and it'll run out of steam. So, so that's why you want to do that. Fight missiles with aspect. Put them on the beam. Okay, gunshots. Uh, for a guy to kill you with a gun, he needs to solve three problems. Or for you to kill somebody with a gun. You need to be in range. You need to have your nose in lead pursuit. Why? Because it's just like Kentucky windage on a, you know, shooting a duck. You know, you got to shoot out in front because you've got a projectile with a fine, you know, a time, time of flight, essentially. It takes time to get there. And you need to be in plane. Those are the three things you need. Those are the three things he, he needs when he starts to close to you for a gunshot. Which one of those do you think you can deny him? Could you deny him range? No, because, you know, we just tried, we just did our best turn, right? And he came right into, he got right in on us. Can you deny him lead? That's what we're trying to do. We're pulling as hard as we can, trying to get his nose in lag. But if he drives to the elbow, right, and at about 3,000 feet pulls his nose to lead, you can't stop him from getting lead pursued. If you could, you, you're doing the best you can pulling, right? No, you can't deny him that one either. So the only one you can deny him, usually effectively, is plane of motion. Okay, how do you deny him plane? Deny him plane with a violent maneuver where you just roll the airplane at least 70 or 80 degrees and then pull out of the plane you were in. You've got to do it at the right time, okay? You've got to do it at the right time. If you do it too early, the guy can just reposition. You know, the fulcrum guy sees you out there, he's coming in for the gunshot, he goes to lead, you go jink. You jink too soon, he makes a correction. Okay, that, that, doing it too soon is, is bad, but doing it too late is worse. So, you know, as you start to see him come in and go, ready, ready, you know, then your left arm sawed off by the gun. Oh, no, now I can't adjust the throttle. Oh, shoot, <laughs> you know? So, anyhow. Let's take a look at a good, effective roll out of plane. Okay, you got a, a, a bandit coming in on an F-16, and you see the guy jinking here, rolling out of plane, okay? And getting out of the funnel is really what you want to do because the funnel shows the bullet dispersion of the gun. So you want to make a violent enough move to maneuver completely out of plane. Here you see, you know, the guy out of plane with the funnel. Defensive BFM is easy to understand. Put your lift vector on the bandit and pull. The bandit is outside your turn circle at two nautical miles. You can force him in front of your 3-9 line with a 7G pull. The bandit starts near your turn circle and drives to lag. You're in big trouble. There's no magic moves to spit him out. All you can do is hope for a mistake and take advantage of any bandit blunders. If no mistakes are made, get ready for a guns jink. Remember, it is better to jink too early rather than too late. We've just talked about defensive BFM. Now let's talk about head-on BFM. Here are the head-on BFM DLOs. Given a, a head-on pass, okay, given a head-on position on the bandit, first thing is to kill the bandit, okay? Employ weapons if you can. Next is to BFM and gain 3-9 line position on the bandit. Okay, that's the next thing we'd like to do. Given we can't kill him at the pass or whatever, do some BFM and gain 3-9 line. The next thing, or the last thing, the last DLO is, if you can't do those two, leave. Okay, and you notice that's a recurring theme, you know. If you can't really do the objectives, okay. We start talking about head-on BFM. We talked earlier about how we exchanged P sub S energy, energy for position. Here's, some, here's my knots, I want position. Okay, this is a 1v1 BFM discussion, so we're not talking about time. Time is tactics. You can think of time as tactics. We're not going to talk about tactics. We're just going to talk about now, okay, we're committed to fight, so we're going to fight. But I, I will throw out, though, when you pass a guy head on, you've got to think very seriously that, do I really want to fight this guy or not? So there, there may be a tactical reason, you know, why you have to turn and fight. But you really got to ask yourself, it's going to take a lot of energy to do this, okay? Okay. 
So now we've got several choices when we go out and pass this guy and we're committed to fight. Let's talk about some terms and definitions here of a head-on pass. Here we're going to show a one-circle fight, because you always hear in head-on, one-circle, two-circle, those kind of things. Here we have a one-circle fight because what happens is both targets turn and their circle is on the same side. You had a fulcrum turning right, an F-16 is turning left. This is what we call a one-circle fight because the radiuses are on the same side. Okay, that's a one-circle fight. Okay. If there's a one-circle fight, then there's got to be a, you know, a two-circle fight, of course. And, and what happens there is both, both guys turn into each other. They both make like, on a left-to-left -left pass, they both turn left. And you can see that here on the Telestrator also. Fulcrum versus Falcon. You're going to pass head-on again, and both guys will turn, looks like, left. What happens here is you've got two circles. Okay. That's a two-circle fight. Let's talk about why you'd want to do one or the other. You'll notice in the one-circle fight, when this guy turned this way, it ended up being a much tighter, you know, you had one guy turning like that and the other guy, you know, turning the same way. You end up with this range being a lot tighter. In a two-circle fight, as they come together, this range that you come head-to-head -head is a lot greater, okay? So what tactical implication does that have? Okay, two-circle fight, just realize you're fighting a fulcrum and the fight goes two-circle, what's going to happen here? You're both going to have a shot opportunity here, so you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful in here. He can shoot you also. So a two-circle fight basically gives you more room away from the guy. The other option we have is to go, we can go flat, one-circle, two-circle. At some point in there, though, you can take the fight vertical. Okay, you can use that energy egg we talked about. You can take the fight up into the vertical, okay, and that's, that's another option. To review, a fighter pilot has several options during a head-on pass. The first and foremost option is to take a shot, if you can, at the bandit. If the bandit doesn't blow up, you should think carefully about your escape window. The ability to leave the fight is biggest right at the pass. If you decide to turn, you can turn away from the bandit or into the bandit. Depending on which way the bandit turns, this will cause a one-circle or two-circle fight. A two-circle fight will give you, and possibly the bandit, a better chance at a head-on missile attack. A one-circle fight will tend to jam both fighters inside minimum range for a heat missile shot. Remember, it will normally require a lot of energy to convert a head-on pass into a shot. We've talked about 1v1 maneuvering. We've talked about offensive maneuvering. We've talked about defensive maneuvering and head-on. Hopefully, I, I've given you the, the techniques that we're currently using out there you know, in the F-16 world so that you can take those and, and, and use them to be successful out there in combat. Remember, you've got to train like you fight and fight to win.